And the reason why I sort of say this is an important day, but not a standalone day, is because today we're sort of going to be looking at talking about the important pieces and structures. And so sometimes we look at sort of silly or goofy scenarios, but we need that before we can get into more of that real world situ situation and interpretation. Let me up here. Okay, so when we are looking at relating graphs to events, there are some important just key things that we need to know. When we are talking about doing this, we are almost always looking at a graph that happens inside quadrant one. And so while there is more of this table that actually exists, remember how before break we were talking about things being a reasonable domain and range? Okay, the majority of things that we look at are reasonable in quadrant one. Not always, but the majority of the time. Right, time is positive, it's not negative. Height is positive, not negative, right? You can't be negative two feet tall. Okay, so lots of things that we are looking at are happening in this quadrant one where things are positive. Right, and just like before, this is still our x-axis and this is still our y-axis. Okay, so can we think to our science classes, because you've done this before, and you talk about independent and dependent variables, right? Have we heard those words before? Which one of those goes down here on this axis? Independent. 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 We're putting our independent variable down here. And we're putting our dependent variable over here. What does it mean for it to be independent and dependent? Mason? Right, so we have this factor of like one is sort of relying on the other. One of it sort of stands alone and one of them is relying on the other. It's sort of like which came first. What do we have to have happen first before we can consider anything else? And again, not always, but a lot of the time. So if you read a situation and you're like, I have no idea what my independent variable is. You should guess time. Because this is a lot of the time what is happening down here. Something with time. Days, seconds, weeks, years. Not always. Not always. But it's often the hidden one in a scenario. Okay, time is passing and then the temperature of the oven is changing. Okay, time is passing and it is the number of hours that I have talked. Right, does that make sense? Whereas our dependent variable is usually the easier item to find in a scenario. It's sort of the main topic that it is. Okay, and you have looked at these before and you look at graphs that do things like this. Okay, pretend that that's a straight line across, but. Okay, and you talk about, um, I don't know, let's say that our independent variable is going to be time and let's say that our dependent variable is going to be distance from door you don't even necessarily need to write this label in okay so I'm going to talk about my distance from the door what is the first thing that's happening in this graph okay and what word do we associate with it when that line is going uphill increasing Right, I have an increasing distance from the door. So right here, this gets a label of increasing. And this is gonna be really important. Students like to make up other words that seem reasonable. Okay, but we don't ever want to assume anything. The only thing that we can assume is that it is an increasing distance from the door. Okay. <clears throat> So I'm increasing my distance from the door. Then what happens? And what does it mean when the graph levels out? Constant, right? Constant is the word that we can use. So the only word we can use for this portion is constant. I am a constant distance from the door. Now, 
it is reasonable to assume I probably stopped, right? But would it also be possible that I'm doing this? Right, it's weird, it's weird. You guys have met me, I'm weird sometimes. It's weird, but it is possible. <clears throat> okay, then what happens? Then I have decreasing. Oh, oh, I missed a whole part in there. Okay, so I have an increasing distance from the door, a constant distance from the door, and a decreasing distance from the door. And hopefully at this point, we're all kind of like, yeah, duh. We've seen this before. These are middle school standards. These are words and terms we should know. Agreed? We now want to take this a little bit further. Okay, what else can we look at and what else can we learn when these graphs include some, some more information now? Okay, so now I want to talk about my distance from the door. Okay, not this graph, we're going to graph it. But what happens if I'm talking about my distance from the door and I do this? What does that graph look like? The exact same. The line it's increasing. Steep one. Okay, so where would my line be steeper? It would be slanted, and then once you start going faster, it gets steeper. Okay, so the wording you said and the motion you just did, Mitch, are a little bit different. Okay, so Mitch is saying it, it's kind of doing this. Right? It's actually curved. Because a straight line means it is a constant speed. So when we are looking at a graph, Okay, and we have something that is straight like this. When we are talking about distance and not speed, right, the steepness of this line is telling me what my speed is, how fast I'm going. Right? Remember that formula that says distance equals rate over time? Distance equals, or distance equals rate times time. Remember this formula? We can figure out our rate by doing our distance divided by time. Okay, so distance and time are telling us our rate. So the steeper the line, the faster the rate. Okay, so if the line is really shallow, I'm walking away from the door like this. Still at a constant speed, my speed's not changing, I'm just doing it slowly. If the line is steep, right, steeper, I'm quickly walking away from the door, but still at a constant speed. Whereas if the line is curved, what's happening to my rate? It's not constant, right? It's changing. Okay, so a straight line also tells me that it's a constant speed. And this is where words start getting confusing. Because my students are like, well, hang on a second. I thought constant was this. This tells us a constant, whatever our Y label is. A flat line says constant, whatever our Y label is. Whereas a straight line Okay, is telling us what these two things are in relationship to each other. Okay, so a straight line is constant, where a curved line, okay, if it's curved, it's telling us that it's not constant. Okay, my speed is changing as I go. I'm starting off slow, and then I'm getting quicker as I go. Okay, does that make sense? How are we doing so far? Are we alive? Yes. Phew. We're starting to worry. We also have this funny 
every word that we can throw in, which is our total distance versus our distance from. Okay, so if we stick to that graph we had before, you don't need to recopy it because you already have it, right? If this is the graph we had before, <coughs> we said that I was <coughs> walking away from the door, increasing my distance from the door, right? Then I'm keeping a constant distance from the door, and then I'm decreasing my distance from the door. Agree? That's that bottom graph. Now, let's say I do that exact same thing, but now I'm no longer going to talk about my distance from the door, but I'm changing my label to my total distance walked. So exact same motion. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I've now changed my Y label. Okay, so now I'm going to start walking away from the door. What's happening to my total distance? It's increasing. Agreed? So I'm increasing. And now I'm doing the same thing, so now I'm just going to stand here. So now what's happening to my total distance? It's not changing. And now I'm going to turn around and go back. Now what's happening to my total distance? Increasing. <coughs> it's going up. <coughs> If something says total, can I ever undo it? No, I cannot. Okay, do we agree with all of those things? We're, we're saying that this makes sense. Okay, so the best way to work with these isn't for me to just stand up here and blab at you because it really doesn't tell us a whole lot. We need to actually kind of practice them and do them. So 